This program is brought to you by Stanford University. After a lot of brainstorming, we came to realize that it is the mobile handheld devices that is going to make the biggest difference in the future in computing and communication. Almost everyone in the world is going to have a mobile computing device that they will carry around with them that will give them access to the internet and computing and storage in a way that the vast majority of people in the world have never had before. These are the people in parts of China, parts of India, parts of Africa who have never had access to a computer but they are they have access to the cell phone and in a few years that cell phone is going to turn into a mobile handheld computer. So we want to understand how we can support uh, whatever 5 billion plus mobile handheld devices and the resulting application uh, on the, the future infrastructure uh, that we call internet. We went from the mainframe to the workstations, the PCs. Now we're talking about the handhelds. So this has been a wave. If you look at the handheld, that is kind of like the final destination. Given this device that you carry with you is something that you can lose very easily, we say that this is going to put the pressure on putting the data into the cloud. The wireless systems as they're evolving today seem to be something that's controlled by industry in the hands of the few and not evolving in a way that's really open or um, otherwise uh, something which can lead to the same kind of innovation that the open internet, the wireline internet, has given us. You know, at Stanford we have a history of innovation and um, technology transfer that's pretty incredible. If you look at this school of engineering and this university over the last 25 years, arguably we have had more impact on the computing communications industry than any other university. The mobile internet, I think, is just on the point of becoming a huge phenomena. And the goals of, I think, for me are at uh, different layers, at the layers of the physical layer, which is actually to transport data across the wireless link, at the networking layer, at the computing layer, at the storage layer, uh, find out what are the key innovations that are needed, uh, come up with these big ideas, and then work through the details and put together some kind of prototypical technology version of this, of this concept, and then, and then sell that to industry so that it becomes real. There are people all the way from radio layer all the way to user interface, and they are all part of the same uh, project or the same team. Before long, you will have people who have nothing but the phone. All right? They don't have the PCs. Everything has to be backed up in the cloud. Now, the first question you have to ask is, who's going to own all this data in the cloud? The big brother portals, the, the Flickers, the Facebooks, the Googles, etc., that they are all vying to control that data. What we're trying to do in, in, in this arena is provide a way for us to place our data wherever we want, control the, the location of our data, run any application that we want. If someone accesses information remotely, then there's also the potential for a bad person to access your information remotely. So we have to look at cryptographic methods and protocols and security policies for sites that store data. If I'm giving up control of my data, as I'm tending to do today, then I'm giving up the, the control of the application that is used upon it. So if I've chosen to go with a particular mail service, whether that's Hotmail or Gmail, they have my data, therefore I'm forced to use their application. We're developing a new data substrate called Purple, another platform for innovation that separates user data from applications. Purple gives us control over our data and who can access it. But if you turn on your cell phone in any city in the United States or across Europe or in most parts of the world, you'll see that there are maybe half a dozen or ten different cellular networks that you could connect to, but you can't use them. All of that capacity is available to us, huge amounts of it, and yet there is no practical way to be able to use it because the industry, the cellular networks in, in particular, have a strong vested interest in putting up walls that prevent us from being able to use other carriers. They lock us into contracts. And what are the likely prospects for developing good mechanisms to share 
uh, wireless networks. I would like to be able to use whatever infrastructure is around me, the wireless capacity that's around me in the, in, in the air, and be able to connect to it or connect to several of them at the same time. We're introducing a technology called OpenFlow, which allows the internet to continuously evolve and improve. What we're trying to do in the POMI project is to break down those barriers that prevent us from, from, from doing this. In the POMI vision of the world, life is a little bit different. We have open wireless networks where anyone can develop applications that they want on top of the handhelds that we create. Um, ideally, the goal would be that even infrastructure and handheld are separated from each other so that multiple handhelds can, can uh, commingle with different infrastructure owners. That's a very different view of the world. Our goal is to provide a way for the, the network underneath the, the, the network infrastructure, which today is sort of dictated and buried inside boxes from, from networking equipment vendors, to be able to open this up in a way that people can readily add new capabilities, new features to make it more secure, to allow support for mobility, to allow applications to decide how packets are routed over the, over the network. And so to really open up, give more choice, create a marketplace for ideas, the more innovation will happen. Nick and Guru's project on OpenFlow is very, very compatible with some of the virtualization work that I've been working on. And if you look at the, put these two things together, that you know, we I think we can build sort of a, a system that you wouldn't be able to do without either one of them. Almost at the time I arrived here at Stanford, I was fortunate to actually come across a very, very game-changing idea. It's called MIMO, and now of course the, the whole world works in it, and it's entered into every standard. It's a must in every new wireless device. More recently, I've been broadening out of MIMO uh, into into what I would call as uh, broadband wireless. That is, uh, you know, how do you actually get really high speeds on wireless links, uh, megabits and then gigabits? The, one of the key ingredients for me is that you're going to have very high speed access on these phones. So, in some sense, I'm in the bottom floor of this project because uh, unless we can enable that link, everything else depends on that. Much of the work that I do, which focuses on low power systems and low power wireless networking, is of direct relevance to these kinds of devices. How tiny low power sensors, how we can use that data to lead to better applications on the web. Um, how do those low power devices communicate? How do they interact with one another? If our project succeeds, the shape of the wireless technology landscape will be completely altered 10, 15 years from now. The, the idea is basically that, at least from a, from a research standpoint, that, that an open architecture is a fundamentally better way to deliver value to the end user. This POMI program brings together uh, a group of people who were very lucky to have all co-located on one campus. They're all world experts, and so we have this breadth and this depth all together. <laughs> I think this is going to be great fun. Uh, really, I'd like to see my students find good projects and get involved and to see uh, different kinds of thinking come about through interaction between different people with different backgrounds. My major collaborator in the project, Dave Mazieres, focuses on security. And we started talking and realized that a lot of the concerns that you have in these two domains, energy efficiency and security, um, actually are very similar in the sense that in security, you want to track how information is being used so that malicious or unknown programs you've downloaded can't read any of your data. From an energy standpoint, you want to make sure that you, know, you can control who uses energy. It can't be that some random application you download uh, consumes your battery without your knowing. Um, and it turns out that a lot of the techniques that he's developed and a lot of the techniques that I've developed could very easily mesh together. And so our goal is to actually design a completely new operating system to run on these devices. The architecture cannot stay as it is. It must change over the next decade to make it more suitable to, for security, for example. So what you do is to build the minimum set give it to the community and then community at large is much more creative and much more innovative. The students are the, are the, the lifeblood of our research. Um, all of us faculty, we talk about things and ideas and visions and missions, but when it comes down to it, nearly all the great ideas and all the great change comes from the students.
we're rolling out some of these platforms across the Stanford campus. And we want to deploy a relatively open uh, mobile wireless infrastructure. We'll create these platforms and we will make them as solid and robust as we can and then we'll just stand back and watch. And then use thousand handle devices that are also open and give it, it, uh, give it away to undergraduates and graduate students. And then as we see how they, how they innovate, when we, you know, where there are limitations, we'll go in and try and change those and tune it and tweak it. And when we're comfortable, we're going to roll this out on other university campuses. And then be able to interlink all of these infrastructures on different campuses with the national backbone network. So we want to actually put this into people's hands and see what they do with it. And that's how we think we'll be able to have impact and change the way that people uh, use these mobile computing devices. My interest in mobile learning technology is to empower uh, children. So I'm interested in helping children who have no access to education. And some places don't even have electricity. Now if we can come up with mobile devices that can run many, many hours uh, and load it with information that will help people connect better, communicate better, and share information better collectively. And that will help uh, people in the underserved areas in, uh, in dramatic ways, especially for children who do not own a book today. I'm very excited about the, the team of faculty students we have assembled together. It looks like it's doable. We think you can do these things. Pi Me 2020 will in fact change our lives. We will see amazing new capabilities that each of us will carry around in our pockets, amazing new ways of interacting with each other, amazing new things we can do while we're on the road or on the train or in our cars or wherever we might be. And this is the place I think where that can happen because the right people are here, the right knowledge, the right capabilities, and the best students in the world are here and at the end of the day they're the ones who are going to actually make many of these breakthroughs.